If you like wildlife, amazing plants, then this vlog today is for you because we have come to Sir Harold Hillier's gardens and this is in Bracefield, just outside of Romsey and there is so much to explore. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Let's go. How cool is this tree? Does it, does it say what it is? Uh, is it a fir tree? I don't know. I'm looking. Some of them have got little things in the ground, but I can't find one on this one. Yeah. So pretty much, pretty much all of the plants or groups of plants have a, a name tag with all the sort of all the sort of names that the Latin names that you are going to struggle to remember. And I think it's fascinating for me, but. I cannot take any of that in. That is far too complicated. We're not remember them. No, but as someone, you you kind of pretend to like pl plants and flowers, don't you? When I have time, pretend. I really enjoy doing it. But it's hard work to keep up with. And we've only got a small garden. You guys, if you've been watching the vlogs, you'll see how small our garden is. Uh, and so, I think going to places like this gives you sort of inspiration. But you still got to have the willpower to do it. And the time. And the time. Okay, let's find out where we're actually going. So whereabouts are we now? Um, we oh, we just come down from the tree on house. We're on this, this path. path, or uh, it's one of these paths. One of these three we're on. But there's so much. Do you know what I'm looking forward to the most? The cafe. The cafe. Or the restaurant. Restaurant, because I'm so hungry. Me too. Uh, but here we've got um, Hilltop Adventures. Maybe that's where we've been. I don't know. I want to see the pond. You I'm want looking to see forward the pond. to the pond. Apparently, it's got the. Um, one of the longest centenary borders, like a double border, one of the longest in the world, apparently. Oh, one of. That'd be good. I'm not going to say it is the longest. And the summer meadow should be in full bloom now because it's June, so that should be really nice there. Okay, Let, I, it's just trying to know where we are because there's... Um, there's a quite a few maps on the path, which is a bit difficult to follow, but we're trying our best. So we've just discovered one of many botanical cone sculptures Oh my God, that's taken me about six attempts to get those words out. Uh, and this is the cedar cone. Charlie, you're gonna have to say the rest because I can't get the words out. Actually, we've been reading all about them and the conifer tree. So it's actually, conifer trees are what most of our paper and building materials come from. And really interestingly, they're apparently waterproof and insect repellent, which is really odd to think, but. That's pretty cool though, isn't it? That they, they, they found a way, this tree has developed a way to keep insects away from them so they don't get destroyed. Ah, fascinating, eh? Fascinating. The things we're going to learn around here. Here's another one, but I think it's seen better days, if I'm honest. I actually knew what this one was without looking at it as well. They're poppy seed heads. See, they're quite cool, aren't they? They're quite good. I really like Yeah, one. once again, seen better days, that one up there. I wonder if birds try and nest in these because of the way That's they look. That's a good shout. They might do. Yeah, they might try and nest in, and that won't be good for them. But they're cool, I like those yeah, they're, ones. they're my favourite so far. This is the Picia abis vinilalis. Oh, whether or not I pronounce that correctly. But I've never felt an actual tree that feels so much like a pretend plant. You know the plastic ones that some people put in their homes? It doesn't even feel real. God, crazy. But it, look, all the droops, they just all droop down. Maybe that's the sort of resin that's on it. Okay, we come to a xylophone. I think we need our own little intro for Charlie and Rob. So, I'm gonna give it a go. This is completely off the top of my head, ready? Hang on. Charlie and Rob, Charlie and Rob, join our vlog. Lovely. That's a truly atrocious, right? That was awful. <laughs> I'm not musically minded. I'm not musically minded. I did, I did music for GCSE. And I couldn't even play an instrument, so I sang. So I'll leave you that with you, uh, and you can all have a laugh. Charlie's moaning at me. Again. She's decided I took the wrong route. And, and this way is a better route, apparently. So as Charlie's the boss, we're going this way. She's probably right, to be fair. I can hear the water already. You can hear the water? So, Are we coming up to a pond? Yes, yeah, so all these beautiful See, these are much nicer. So where we've just been going, Pond. where we've just been going has been a little bit green. 
green, Normal right? Field. Uh, so we want some colour. So we've got some yellows. Like Beautiful. It. Lots of yellows. Breathe in, it smells really good. <laughs> what am I smelling? That's all flowery, it's lovely. Watch, yeah, watch my pollen just go up yeah, in my nose sleepy. and suffer. But this is quite oh, nice, nice, isn't it? Pond's nice. It's, it's a pond. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. I honestly don't think I've seen so many fish in one place in real life, other than on like TV. There's so many there. But there's just loads, and they're not just here. There, there was loads of. of they're all in. Well. They're all in the reeds. And it's like I think they think we. I think that they think we are going to feed them because they've just come and come to us. Wow, uh, I don't even know what type of fish they are. If you do know, if you know, let us know in the comments. I love when you get sculptures like this. Uh, it's a metal and glass dragonfly, but you can see on the glass that it's sort of distorted with the color, that the paint that's been put through it. How cool is that? Follow the wife. Big leaves. Ah, oh, God. They are, aren't they? Whoa, hang oh, on. This is the bog garden. The bog garden. Look at. Wow. Don't pull off because it's very muddy. I don't think I've seen anything like this. It's, it's so big. But it's got like the thorns on. They'd be perfect tied under if it was raining. So I would say great for catching water, great for catching the sunlight, photosynthesis and all that. See, that's a big word. Do you remember some GCSE science? Oh, very little, very little. Ooh. If I went back to school now and took my GCSEs, would you fail? I'd probably fail. I have probably got the best fact you'll hear all year. Okay, you ready for this? Now, we all love bamboos, right? Bamboos are awesome. Now, when one bamboo species flowers, every bamboo of that species flowers at the same time no matter where in the world it is. That's pretty cool. So like you look in here in England when this flowers everywhere else, everywhere else, uh, uh, Chile, 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 anywhere else, where else has bamboos? China? I was gonna China. say China, China was my guess. China. Thailand? We're at Thailand? Vietnam? Vietnam? I'm just repeating what you're saying. I don't really know anywhere else. Okay, we're just guessing now, really, where we think bamboo is. But how cool is that fact? That's pretty cool. No matter what the climate, they all flower exactly. at the same time. Exactly. Even if it's like winter, because obviously we're Northern Hemisphere, so our, our temperature is going to be different yeah, to what's in the semis Southern Hemisphere or even around the equator. And uh, how? Pretty impressive. Yeah, how do they know? I don't know. And I think it's one of these things that sort of not even the scientists know about. Mm. Really odd. Quite cool though. I'm, I'm confused and baffled, but what an incredible fact. Are you just finding all of the obstacles? Yeah. Okay, come on. Oh, oh that don't bounce. Oh. <laughs> Still on the bamboo subject. Uh, we're in the Himalayan Valley. That's what this section is called now. I never realized how many different types of bamboo there are. I, and to, for me, to be fair, there's some that are more brown, some that are more green, some that are thicker and some that are thinner. That is all I sort of notice, but there are so many different types. And it's bloody rock hard. You wouldn't want to get... Actually, it reminds me of... Um, it's a Jean-Claude Van Damme film. Bloodsport, something like that, I think it was. And I'm sure they were used bamboo and to whack each other for training, because it's so hard. Where are you off to? You found another somewhere else to go. Come on then. There's another bridge. Another bridge. Not one you're going to bounce on. Oh, okay. Where is this? More bamboo! I sound like a child in a sweet shop. But I just... I think bamboo might now be my favourite. It might be it my favourite. everywhere though. Does it? You do not want bamboo in your garden. Well, our garden's a bit small, so... Because the roots go into the 
the um, the foundations of your house. Do they? Mm. Ooh. And can ruin the foundations of your house. Okay. You on really? I want to know now if anyone has bamboo in their garden. Let me know. I absolutely love all these stained glass sculptures. Uh, they're really, really nice patterns on. But actually, what I really like, and this probably wasn't intended, but all of the metal has rusted. And I think it gives it just that little bit of character as well. It's very late for lunch, so we couldn't get any hot food anywhere, which is a bit rubbish. But we're going to get chicken and bacon sandwiches. And Rob's got I went the massive scone. Scone? 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 scone. Whatever you want to call it. This is the comments today is literally going to be so many people. We've asked so many questions. Do you call it a scone? Or a scone. Or a scone. Uh, we're going to tuck into this now. And uh, hopefully that will keep us going for another couple of hours. And then we've got the bit with all the flowers to go, I think. Okay. So there's more colour coming. More colour coming. Well, this area is really pretty, isn't it? It's really nice down here. Magnolia what? Avenue. Magnolia Avenue, this little section's called. And we've got lots of colours. Uh, what's this called? It's a clematis. A clematis. Oh. Another bumblebee. Another bumblebee. I don't know if you can see. These are really nice growing up trellises on fence. They look really nice. Just a, a bee in action. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> going up trellises, you say? Yes. Yeah, this is, this is nice. I don't know if I'd want it as my garden, though. It's a bit large, isn't it? I knew these were sedum. I could tell you that. You knew they were sedum? Yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Nice, well done. Well done. Do you want a medal or something? Yeah, I do. You want a medal that you've got one... A two. Two? Well, that I knew that was a clematis. That literally that one just then. She knew that was a clematis. I knew it was a poppy seed head. Oh, hang on. Come this way. Something over there. What's the chances this is a, a, a bust of Harold. Sir Harold Hillier? Hmm. Let me have a look. Check this out. It is. So here we go. There is Sir Harold Hillier, who created these gardens. 1953 started. 1953. I wasn't even born then. Neither were you. Nope. So Harold Hillier. I don't know if you know any history about him. We'll Google it. I don't know. Let's Google it as we walk. I'm loving finding out what the, the English names for these are. So these are the Penstemon. However, the English name is Sour Grapes. I wonder who gave it that name and who they were thinking of when they decided on it. I used to, when I was a kid, used to pick these and you can go like that with them. Huh? What do you, you mean? They're snapdragons. So basically what you can do when you pick the heads, I'm not going to pick one but you can go like that, your fingers fit in perfectly and you can go like oh, that really? so it looks like they're a talking puppet. I think these are the most vibrant, these are definitely the most vibrant ones. These were what I actually would really like to fill the garden with actually because I love these. They come out so nicely. I so many bright colours. There's some more vibrant ones over there as well. I really like this really like hot pink though. You probably like the orange. Yeah, I, I do like the orange here. I, yeah, that's a root because you've got the orange and the yellow in it as well. Kind of like your bowls. That is just like my lawn bowls, isn't it? Is it red or is it orange? That's, that's pink, yellow and orange. <laughs> These are, the, well the English name is the Tawny King. Can you pronounce what the... Is it Latin? The... Kifofia? Kipof, ki, I think it's got to be a Kifofia. I just love that they're ombre. The ombre colour is like incredible, isn't it? Really delicate, actually. I, and yet you're pulling at it. You I've seen what it felt like. Oh, it is. I 
like them. I expect it to be a bit more solid. They're really, really nice. nice aren't they're they? really pretty. The problem is, surely most of these, well, or a lot of these plants aren't sort of native to our country. No. You're finding some research on your little booklet. I can't tell you anything about them though. Oh. He's got plants from Korea, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, just to name. He's got plants from Korea, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, United States, Mexico, just to name a few. That's what's on the leaflet. So a beautiful type of rose, the Rosa Elm's Horn. But that's not the great thing. Check this out. It just looks like a big bush, right? This whole bush next to it. The name okay. of it, it is... Go the, full. <laughs> well, the Pitosaur, Pitosaur, Pitosporum tenuifolium. And the name for it... Golf ball. Is the golf ball. I, the names of these are just... I think the, the English names are more fascinating yeah. than the actual latin names i assume they're latin i can't see what those things are called over there but to me they look like almost like witch's fingers oh, i was gonna say they look very witchy they do don't they because they're all sticking up and they just remind me yeah I, I, what type of witch do you think then we go to the blue waves the wasps are absolutely loving these look they at are. all the wasps all over them look at them they are enjoying the blue waves, aren't they? I actually love these delphiniums. They, the colour of them is so bright blue. It's like you're in a nightclub or something, it's isn't it? It's almost neon, isn't it? With the it purple is. fading into it, they're really, really nice. They have a proper colour to it. Here's your fact. Harold Hillier was knighted for his services to horticulture in 1983. There you go, there's your fact to finish off. Uh, and this is his, his gardens that he created. I think he's got more. Um, I think he's got other gardens in other locations as well. And there's lots of garden centres But there's in the loads area. of garden centres. Uh, there's one in Winchester, for example. But thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's, it's nice to have a relaxed trip somewhere. Yes. Uh, because, uh, did you know, they were talking about this on the radio the other day, that being around trees increases your lifespan, apparently. Oh. Yeah, trees apparently have healing properties. Were you out dog walking amongst the trees? That's going to be good for you. Maybe I will be living for a very long time. God help you all. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully you found it quite interesting, relaxing, uh, and we've had a nice little afternoon here. So thank you so much for joining us. What do they have to do? Uh, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Share it with some friends. And yeah, we'll catch you next time. Bye.